Welcome back, everyone. Um, we hope you had a, a good chance to stretch. We're really pleased to welcome you to Spoken Three, creating a movement, lessons from the past in moving REM forward with Daphne, Kiki, and Wilfo Ringamoto, um, sharing case stories from the Pacific Conference of Churches of Active Work, that's Penny. Um, so over to you, Cliff and Daphne and Wilfo. Thank you, um, Kelly. Uh, we'll just go straight into this session. And um, uh, so uh, can I just call upon um, um, our two uh, youth um, voices here? They've introduced themselves already earlier on. So I'll ask them, Wilfa and Daphne, um, to take this uh, uh, session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Reverend Chief and everyone. I think um, me and Wilfa will switch off our video so you can hear us clearly because of the network on this side. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so we were tasked to talk about the REM youth component of our Rewind Ecological Map Initiative um, under the project. So primarily, it came into existence to um, champion REM advocacy and empower young individuals and foster a sense of solidarity among young youths in the Pacific region and particularly on uh, matters that directly impact them. Um, <clears throat> furthermore, it was envisioned as a vital conduit for bridging the generational divide and facilitating meaningful intergenerational dialogues. So we will, the uh, presentation will come in four parts. Uh, we will be talking about the case studies uh, that will be talked about by Wilfa and the lessons learned and, and the way forward and where you might want to get involved in the ways forward um, for, from this movement and to help young people embody the RAM principles and concepts uh, practically within the local <coughs> communities in the region. So I will now give it to Wilfa to talk about the case studies um, on young academics, Seeds for Eco School, and Pacific Conference of Churches Eco Farm are working with nature and community. Thank you, uh, Daphne. Um, hello again to, to you all. So my time is to bring representatives from the local communities that are affected uh, by issues such as food security, extraction of resources, health and environment. Um, sadly, the, the program is supposed to be a regional one, but uh, the program is supposed to be a regional one, but due to lack of funds and resources to bring over those um, the young people uh, that's supposed to be part of this program so uh, we decided to have it as a pilot program but to make it um, as a local um, a national one so we started here in Fiji where we get uh, young people uh, representatives from the local communities to come and participate um, uh, to be part of this young academic program where we train them and um, train them to do advocacy work and uh, hoping that they can become change makers uh, in their local communities um, at the end of um, the program for them to do projects to help their communities based on the issues they face back in their uh, communities. Um, uh, it is a program, also, uh, the program is also to reaffirm the importance of relationships in the way we 
we live our life and do things here in the Pacific and uh, also to teach the young people um, that you not only talk about the issues or advocate about the issues, but you need to be practical with what you you talk about or do. So that is um, about the young academic um, program uh, that they started and then we still have the young people which will be graduating soon. Um, some of the things that um, we started well with uh, almost 30 participants, but then now there's only a few of them left. Uh, due to some of the young people, they have other responsibilities which they play in their families. So bringing them into the program really affects uh, those responsibilities as helping be, uh, as breadwinners in the family. So they needed to leave the program, but to go and get a job for themselves uh, to cater uh, to help um, cater for their families so we're looking forward for the graduation um, and then we'll we'll see how we can and since it's a pilot program um, we have a lot of things that we learn from it and we've seen where we can improve the program in the future um, just briefly on the Pacific Conference of Churches um, Echo Farm. Uh, this Echo Farm, uh, this farm is not just any farm like our usual farms here in the Pacific, but it is um, a farm that is very dear to the Pacific Conference of Churches and their member churches and people like myself, which is doing the RAM work. Um, there in the farm. Uh, it is a farm where we're going to build our eco school. Um, it will be a space where we not only bring rep representatives from the local communities and those that are already interested in the work we do, but um, are opening to other young people that are interested to, to be part of it. Um, in this um, echo farm, we want the echo farm to be an organic, um, uh, organic one. Uh, we try not to cut, try not to cut trees, but um, however, we have some mature trees there that we have to cut so we can use it for the buildings um, that we'll build for the echo school. Um, it is a farm that we be replanting indigenous plants and medicines. And then in that farm, we try to um, introduce the ecological accounting. Uh, ecological accounting in a sense that we, the participants that we bring to our eco school, we, they will learn um, to measure the value of um, the resources we have. Um, it will be a place where it's um, practical. Um, I know that we need to be practical in a sense that uh, we talk about pastoral and prophetic in our churches, but we need a, a space where we practice what we preach. And it is a place to learn to use, uh, we'll teach our, our participants to learn to use the resources we have, the already existing ones. It will be a place of sharing of knowledge, opinions, and experiences, and also visions, uh, where we exchange ideas too, and a place of reflection. And um, uh, the farm also is the place where we used to plant trees to offset our carbon footprints. So we usually have our partners and donors that come or the, the staff every time we travel. We, when we go to the farm, we always plant um, not just any tree, but any, an indigenous plant or a tree to mark. And um, it is also a space where we're going to celebrate our season of creation and reflect on God's creation and, our, uh, and the purpose of us being custodians. And uh, the last one is um, a place where we um, 
we play our role of stewardship and responsibility. So um, like I've said earlier, this ECOFARM, the Pacific Conference of Churches, ECOFARM will, is not just any farm, but it is a very important farm um, where we also want to encourage, uh, if you don't know, most of our churches here in the Pacific, um, we have lands, a lot of lands. So it is an example where our churches can look at and see how they can make use of their land. So that is briefly from my end and I will hand it over to Daphne. Thank you, Ufa. Um, so the, oh, um, can you go to the second slide, please? Yes, uh, yes, the lessons from the past, thank you. So I will be talking about lessons from the past. Um, so the REM youth has, um, have engaged with young people in Papua New Guinea at the beginning of um, the REM uh, conferences. And we have engaged with um, youths at the University of Papua New Guinea and um, University of Papua New Guinea. And we have engaged with Solomon Island young people that are into arts. Um, artists, young people, young artists in Solomon Islands, and in Fiji we have we have had um, projects in local communities in Fiji, um, and uh, engaged with young people in Fiji like the Young Solwara um, from Peng, the Utonialo Trust, and um, we have engaged in. Advocacy, advocating on RAM within local communities, um, advocating on sustainable transportation and collecting data um, in the local communities. So from those, from those engagements, these were the lessons that came up. Um, lessons learned were, as we reflect on the past experiences, um, there are several key lessons. And this uh, recognizing the importance of language as it is crucial to consider language use when communicating with youths. Um, tailoring our messages to be inclusive, uh, relatable and easily comprehensible that ensures our message uh, resonates with this dynamic demographic. Uh, for example, when engaging with young Solomon Island artists um, how, how would they understand RAM in an artistic point of view? And how would they rethink and reframe their artistic mind to incorporate RAM in their art and to advocate for ecological or social justice issues and why it is important that they feel included in this um, development narratives using their art and their skills and um, talents. So this uh, recognizing importance of language is one. The number two is ensuring continuous youth engagement. So from, from the youth engagements, uh, keeping youths engaged and interested over time is the challenge. And I think how can we achieve this or how can we keep youths engaged and uh, interested or passionate about these issues or this movement? So, the third one is sustaining and supporting engaged youths. So when we go out to the communities, once youths are initially introduced to REM and engaged with REM, maintaining that connection and support becomes paramount. And what I think the question is, what strategies can we implement for this? The fourth is um, alignment of youth initiatives. So we have, uh, currently, we have the uh, PCC and PTC IMR working on um, youth initiatives, but uh, to avoid unnecessary repetitions and foster a unified message, it's imperative that all youth initiatives, particularly programs, for example, the PCC Eco School or the PTC IMR Young Academics, align their efforts and how can this alignment be achieved um, effectively. So. 
the the other one is promoting ongoing collaboration with youth organizations. Um, collaborating with youth organizations and group is a cornerstone of success. And how can we actively engage and sustain these collaborations is um, a challenge. And harmonizing youth initiatives for a unified um, message. The last one is regional outreach. So regional outreach and contextualization because um, collaborating with youths across the Pacific, we, we found that the Pacific is very diverse and um, contextualizing and uh, being cultural, culturally sensitive to understanding and respecting unique characteristics and needs of each region will greatly help tailor this um, RAM initiatives forward. And how can we ex achieve that is, a, is the question at the moment. So hitting these lessons, um, we have come up with four, four ways forward. So number one is enhancing youth networking in the region. So there is a growing need for greater network, networking among youths in the Pacific region and building a network across Pacific church youths and other organizations or youth organizations is a crucial step forward to, to establish a more cohesive and impactful rare movement. It is imperative to cultivate connections and foster networking um, among Pacific churches and youths and relevant organizations. So this network can serve as a dynamic platform for collaboration, collaboration, idea sharing, and collective uh, action. So currently, the REM Youth is uh, working closely and collaboratively with uh, the Young Solwara um, and, and the REYC, the uh, Regional Ecumenical Youth Council. So uh, REM principles are initiated through those networks, and this can be done by organizing networking events too, such as conferences, seminars, workshops, and youth summits. Um, these events can provide platform for youth to meet and exchange ideas and knowledge sh sharing or form connections. The number two is uh, capacity building workshops. So we have found out that youths need a lot of capacity building. Youths are very passionate about um, changing the, the uh, development narrative, but they also need capacity building to help them do that. And recognizing the diverse interests, talents, and skills of young people is essential. So youth engagement in environmental, environmental and social justice issues can vary widely. Therefore, it is vital to implement capacity building programs that empower young individuals to utilize the unique talents and skills in advocacy and community engagement. We noticed that most young people are very passionate in driving sustainable development and uh, within the local communities. However, they lack support and capacity to do so. So therefore, there is a need to organize these workshops and training sessions on topics like leadership or communication and entrepreneurship or advocacy. So these workshops can really help young people develop skills that enhance their networking abilities. So, so this personalized approach is key to propelling the REM movement forward. Number three is developing REM youth advocacy tools, and that is um, that was at the beginning uh, an idea that is still here, and we are hopeful, hopefully, will develop a REM youth advocacy tools in the future. And there is a pressing need to create them, especially for youth advocacy. And this uh, tool should encompass the range of resources, including Bible studies and informative booklets, um, tailoring to resonate with the values and beliefs of Pacific churches and youths. And these resources will facilitate 
uh, effective communication and engagement with this demographic and can also be used as a guide for community engagement and advocacy within the REM movement around the region. And the fourth one is the establishment of a resource center or hub, a nexus, so to speak. So to ensure a sustained engagement strategy, it is imperative to establish a dedicated resource center or hub. So it's referred to here as the nexus and this central platform will house REM, REM youth resources or REM resources as a whole and making them readily available for individuals and youth groups, organizations across the region. So we have found out that um, just by engaging youth and talking to youth is not enough. Um, they need resources or they need a focal point to come back to or help to come back to, to review resources or help get resources to help them in their advocacy or in their um, work. So it will serve as a dynamic space where youths can also engage and share knowledge and find the support they need to stay actively involved and enthusiastic about the REM initiative. So these are just the, uh, these are just four uh, way forward that we have we have identified. But by addressing these key needs, uh, REM youth can strengthen its movement. The young people can embody REM principles and create many meaningful connections. Uh, empower young individuals across the region and provide valuable resources and tools that align with the cultural, the spiritual values of Pacific churches and organizations and the local community as a whole. So this holistic approach will contribute significantly to the success and impact of the REM initiative in the Pacific region. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Wilfred and uh, Daphne, for the uh, uh, great uh, uh, input that you two have together. And thank you, um, uh, especially for the uh, lessons learned from the past and uh, moving forward, particularly amongst the young people in the region. So, uh, and the uh, some of your thoughts and suggestions in moving REM forward um originally um, um uh, in in terms of the support that that would be needed so thank you very much um again